Good. We are now going to give an overview of the multiple use cases that are enhanced and transformed through the use of ultra wideband. Being the first one of them, access control. Ultra wideband's unique combination of precision and security is likely to become the basis for secure access. Ultra wideband for access compared to other existing solutions bring you real, accurate, secure hands-free access control even when you have your phone in your pocket. Let's go into the details of how ultra wideband based hands-free mobile access work. There are three main steps. First step is wake up and initialization through Bluetooth low energy. During this time, your phone and the door lock are detecting each other through Bluetooth low energy. And based on the service ID, the door lock and the phone know if they have already been associated, meaning if they have the right credentials to unlock. The second step is the ultra wideband secure ranging. This mobile device and the lock are associated and have validated the credential, which is used to initialize ultra wideband secure ranging. With this ranging, the door lock gets information about the distance and also about the angle of arrival. The third step, which is granting the access, ultra wideband measures the distance between the two devices, and once the threshold distance is reached, the unlock is triggered. Ultra wideband precise localization with enhanced security allows the door lock to determine with high precision that the person with the right credential is willing to enter. Also, ultra wideband allows you to detect whether you are inside or outside, so you can close the session when it detects you have closed the door. But not only in access to homes, offices, or hotels, ultra wideband is useful. On top of this, ultra wideband also brings the best user experience for hands-free uh, car access. It uses a similar procedure to physical access control. So first, it uses Bluetooth low energy for wake up and initialization. Then it uses ultra wideband for secure ranging with the credentials derived from the previous step. And last, it grants access to the car together with the inside and outside detection using angle of arrival method. Another common ultra wideband use case is item tracking. Ultra wideband can be used for making devices findable by attaching a ultra wideband tag to them like a keychain, earbuds or remote control. This works in the following way. The first step is to pair the devices, a process that assigns this item belonging to you. This process can be done through Bluetooth Low Energy or an NFC tag and creates a pairing key so only you can look for the device. The second step is to initiate the device search through the application. This is to perform the presence check if you are in the range of that device. The device is advertising the service ID via Bluetooth so it makes it discoverable for the mobile device. The last step is to find and locate the item. Here, ultra wideband station ranging delivers information about the distance and angle of arrival to determine the search direction, narrow it down to a certain area and make it, making it easier to locate them. Our next use case is indoor navigation. With ultra wideband, you can implement GPS style location services indoors to navigate large buildings like shopping malls, airports, hospitals, making it easy to find a store, a friend, or even items with a precision of few centimeters. Ultra wideband is fitted and designed to work in very crowded environments with multiple signals, with obstacles or walls, even if the track item is located in non line of sight. The topology for an indoor navigation looks like this, yes, the anchors, which are part of the infrastructure of the building, are connected to a central unit and a location engine running in the background. The mobile units, or tags, are transmitting their signals, which are intercepted by the anchors. Based on the timestamps of the signals received from the mobile units, or tags, the anchors can calculate the time of flight, meaning how long took the signal to arrive to the anchor, and based on this, the localization engine is able to determine the position within the building. There are two ways to make this ranging. One is two-way ranging, we've seen it before. Here the phone is communicating with at least three anchors and obtaining ranging measurements from each. 
then determining location based on that information. This approach implies some network capacity limitation due to the number of tags ranging with multiple anchors. The second is the time difference of arrival, where tags are sending simple blink packages periodically and anchors measure the time of flight. Then the backend is determining the position of the eating being tracked and this supports high network capacity because of the blink packages used by the tag or the mobile device. So overall, many interesting use cases. The relevance here is that FIDA is advocating for a rich set of use cases which are specified for implementation, starting with three major categories. Hands-free access control, location-based services, and device-to-device -device applications. These three can be applied to different verticals such as smart home and consumer, smart cities and retail, uh, smart cities mobility, sorry, smart retail, and smart building and industrial. From residential access control to augmented reality for gaming to patient tracking, targeted marketing, food traffic analytics, you name it, thanks to ultra wideband precise localization with enhanced security and no power compromise, a wide variety of applications and compelling use cases are now within your reach. <laughs>